This is Dennis Sanders. I'm the pastor of First Christian Church of St. Paul, Disciples of Christ, located in Roseville, Minnesota. I hope you're having a good week. Well, during the season of Lent, we are, these videos are going to be focusing basically on our theme for the season, which is unfinished, discerning God's call in the not yet. And the text that we're focusing on this week is the woman at the well from John 4, verses 5 through 42. But before we go into that text, I wanted to do a little bit of a setting the scene, the local scene, if, if I may. Back in 2015, uh, First Christian Church voted to become an open and affirming congregation within our denomination, the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. Now what that means is basically that we are a congregation that welcomes LGBTQ people into the full life of the congregation. So we don't just welcome people to come to church or even just to be members, but to be welcome into all aspects of church life. And that includes pastor, such as in my own situation myself. But ever since that we've voted for that, there's been a question that I've been dealing with. What are we being inclusive for? Why are we doing this? Why does it matter? And people have various answers to that question. Some people would answer that question by saying that Jesus was inclusive, so we should be inclusive too. And there is a lot of truth to that. Jesus welcomed people from various walks of life. And yes, we should follow what Jesus did. And yet, that answer always feels incomplete. There are others that will say that the church must welcome LGBT, LGBTQ people into the life of the church in order to be relevant. Again, the times that we live in, that makes some sense. That makes a whole lot of sense. But we aren't called to be trendy or to be relevant as a church. We are called to be faithful to God. Then there are others that will say that because so much of the church can be anti-gay that we have to respond by being much more affirmative, especially to challenge those more conservative Christians with their unaffirming views. And I would agree that we must be a witness of God's inclusive love. But I would also hope that we would be doing that even if there weren't conservative Christians that had unaffirming views. So, the question still remains. What are we being inclusive for? And that brings me back to the text. In John 4, Jesus ends up in Samaria. And Samaria is this region that is made up, of course, of Samaritans. And Samaritans were kind of like Jews. They had some similar background, similar lineage, though there was some difference. And there was also similar the the theology, but there was enough difference in both theology and also in lineage to cause friction. And there was friction between these two groups. So when Jesus meets this Samaritan woman, He's breaking a whole lot of taboos. He begins, he's talking to a woman, and that's a taboo. And he's talking to a Samaritan woman. And he engages in conversation with this woman. And in this conversation, little by little, he reveals to the woman who he truly is. And he finally says to her, I am he. 
When he says that, she realizes this is the Messiah. I've been talking to the Messiah. And she is so excited that she leaves her water jar, the reason that she came to the well in the first place. And she runs to the village to tell everyone else. And she tells the villagers that she has met someone that knows everything about her, even though he doesn't know who she, she's, he's never met her before. And she says to them, he can't be the Messiah, can he? So the villagers go out, they meet Jesus, and they too believe, and they, Jesus stays with them for several days. And in verse 42, the villagers say to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard ourselves and we know that this is truly the savior of the world. So I ask that question again, why, what are we being inclusive for? What are we being inclusive to LGBTQ folk for in the first place? Why does it matter? that our church and that churches should be inclusive and welcoming. We do this because Jesus encountered people from all walks of life, and that probably included LGBTQ folk. And those people met Jesus through these encounters and they were called into discipleship and into witness. And that still happens today. Inclusion means that we tell people, that we tell all people, including LGBTQ folk, that Jesus loves them for who they are. And especially in this context, that they don't have to pretend to be straight, to be loved by God. But inclusion doesn't just stop there. It also leads people, those hearing the message like the woman at the well, to witness, to drop what they're doing, and to go and tell others, because they have witnessed the love of God, and they want to tell others, and because they want to tell because there are so many others, including people like themselves, who don't know that they are loved by God. The church must be and should be a place that is open to people of various sexual orientations and gender identities. We should be tolerant of differences. But inclusion doesn't just mean inviting them to church. We don't talk and do inclusion just to be nice. We do this because we want them to know the love of God and to grow in the love of God. Inclusion should lead people into discipleship, to learning about who Jesus is and then allowing Jesus to change people, to be more and more disciples of Jesus Christ. In a time when it seems like animus against LGBTQ people is rising, the church does need to be a place that is more affirmative and affirming. But once we welcome people, we also want to help them to become disciples, fulfilling what Jesus said at the end of his earthly ministry, to go and make disciples of all nations. We want to be places where LGBTQ folk will hear the gospel, will hear the good news, and then tell their families and friends, who then can hopefully say what the villagers said to the Samaritan woman. It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the savior of the world. Take care, church. Godspeed, and I will see you soon.